The Caring Communities Project has been about empowering these people, these groups, and making their voices heard. The project set out to test and learn what care and support could look like if the community was in the lead and in charge. What we found is that the services that are often given to communities, given to people, don't really work. And actually, what we need to do is to work with communities to find out what they require and then to collaborate with them to take those ideas forward. We've been fortunate enough to start a Kaya Carers Club aimed at unpaid carers where they get peer support, they get time out from their caring role, even if it's just for a couple of hours a week. I care for my husband, who's a veteran. Prior to coming to Carer Club, I had nothing. There was, we had no like external carers coming in. It was just me trying to cope. And then from starting the group and watching the group grow, I've been able to get resources and have external carers come in. And it's had an amazing effect on my mental health. I think this project has definitely taught me that in the community, there's a lot more resources that are like local as well as the big ones you hear about. Being able to reach out to Rachel really was a complete godsend because she was able to give me the knowledge that I needed. We did have unpaid carers that were really, really struggling and had no time for themselves. Once we were able to set up care for them, they were able to come out, meet other people that were in exactly the same sort of situations as them. I had one lady that she said it was just nice to say that it was hard. Through the project, we found that a lot of people automatically assume care as being statutory care and they've got to reach a crisis point before they can access any kind of care. A lot of the care in the community is done by the community and for the community. Some of the groups that this project has engaged with include the Endeavours to the Refresh Community Gardening Group. The importance of the Endeavours really is to stave off isolation. Some of the members here, it's the only time that they get out and meet anybody. I joined when I lost my husband and I've been coming ever since because now I regard them as part of my family really. Refresh Group is for people like with mental health issues and people who haven't got mental health issues. The benefit of them coming here is they like to come, sit, relax, chat about their worries. As part of coming to this group, I've made a new family and I wouldn't have had that before. I wouldn't have had uh, that feeling of connection to my community. When Rachel comes to the group, uh, we chat about what we need, what could be better, what's not working so well. And when she's here, we're being listened to and we're being heard. These groups, I think they're a necessity now because people really do need them. They need someone at the go to talk to people, find things to do, gives you confidence and the will to carry on. It's marvellous. I also work with individuals within the community. This can be individuals receiving a package of care. It can also be individuals that want to help, like my change makers. As a change maker volunteer, I've helped out on several of her projects or her groups. I do a lot of the crocheting and leaving it around for people to find in the community. I enjoy being part of the groups because it gives me something to do, gets me out the house, keeps me occupied. I just like helping people. My friend Sylvia is a person, when I say care for, I care for in as much as I care about her. I can't physically do the things that she needs to have done with the carers, but I'm mostly concerned with her mental well-being. She needs to be reassured that she's a person who counts. I had a stroke five years ago but I was friends with Elaine before then. You know, I only got a phone her and she's there. And that's one of the things that keeps me going, is the fact that people care about me. The actual community members provide so much care and respect and opportunity for one another. They prevent a lot of individuals reaching crisis point and needing the services of statutory care. They need to be seen and heard and respected more these people are amazing. What we've learned from the project is that communities hold the solutions to care and support. And what this suggests for the future is that we need to listen to communities and follow their lead. And we need to put investment into community-based organisations that can provide better connected care and support.